Hello, a good day to everyone. My name is Dave. Today we are going to talk about how to use DSM-5. It is an introduction to Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, 5th edition. These are the contents that we are going to discuss in these videos. We are going to talk about the importance of diagnosis, the relationship between DSM-5 and ICD-10. We are going to have a brief look at the history of DSM and also the transition from DSM-4TR to DSM-5. We are going to look at the three major components of DSM-5, chapters in DSM-5, and how to diagnose using DSM-5. Lastly, we are going to look at the descriptive text of DSM-5 and also the section 3 of DSM-5. First, now let's look at the importance of diagnosis. Why do we diagnose? Because it directs the cost of treatment. For example, let's imagine that a client in the clinic present a bipolar disorder at its early stage, which can look a lot like a major depressive disorder. If the clinician makes the right diagnosis and diagnoses the client as living with bipolar disorder, it will lead to the right treatment. What about misdiagnosis? Misdiagnosis can lead to serious problems. If the clinician diagnoses the client as living with major depressive disorder, antidepressants might be given, and it might provoke many episodes and do little help to the condition. So that's the importance of right diagnosis because diagnosis can lead to appropriate treatment and the prognosis of the disease. For the DSM-5 and ICD-10, now before that, we are going to look at DSM-5. DSM-5 is a standard classification of mental disorders used by mental health professionals. It puts the emphasis on distress and disability as important defining characteristics of psychopathology. However, it does not suggest treatment guidelines. For ICD-10, it is the standard diagnostic tool for epidemiology, health management, and clinical purposes. It is to classify diseases and other health problems recorded on many official records, including death certificates and also health records. It enables the storage and retrieval of diagnostic information and for compilation of national statistics. It is also used for reimbursement and resource allocation during the policy planning. The relationship between DSM-5 and ICD-10 can be quite simple to explain. Actually, DSM-5 is a guide to pick the right ICD-10 codes. For example, in ICD-10, Major Depressive Disorder, MAL, single episode is coded as F32.0. Now, let's have a brief look at the histories of DSM. We have DSM-1 to DSM-5 throughout these years. For DSM-1, it was first published in 1952 and it has 132 pages. Mental disorders were regarded as reactions. Definition was simple, brief paragraph with prototypical descriptions are included in DSM-1. For DSM-2, it was first published in 1968. It, the number of pages increased by two pages and it has 134 pages. Reaction terminology was dropped and users are encouraged to record multiple psychiatric diagnoses and associated physical conditions. Its publication coincided with the publication of ICD-8. For DSM-3, it has 494 pages and was published in 1980. It first introduced the concept of multi-axial classification system and its goal is to introduce reliability. Its publication coincided with the publications of ICD-9. For DSM-4, it was published in the 1994, and look at the pages it has. The number of pages increased to 886 pages. A first inclusion of a clinical significance criteria, the new disorders were introduced, like PTSD and also bipolar disorders. For DSM-4, text revision, it was published in 2000. It first introduced the five-part axial system, and it has the descriptive text updated. For the DSM-4TR, it includes a very important diagnostic criteria, which is the clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. functioning. And now, we have DSM-5. It was published in the 2013. It has 947 pages, and it used the number 5 instead of the Roman value of V, which symbolizes 5. And it means that we can anticipate changes in the future, for example, with the introduction of DSM 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, and etc. 
Now we are going to look at the major transition from the SM40R to the SM5. Some of the major changes in the SM5 is in include combat axes, new chapters and disorders, new diagnostic criteria, and also the introduction of severity measures. Now let's look at the combined axes. In the SM40R, we have five axes, namely for axis 1. In clinical disorders, axis 2, personality disorders and mental retardation, axis 3, general medical conditions. In the SM5, these three axes are combined. Disorders are no longer categorized as acute or lifelong. For the DS, um, DSM4, axis 4, so psychosocial and environmental problems, the SM5 recommends the use of Z codes in the ICD-10. For the axis 5 of the SM4, global assessment of functioning, it was replaced by who does 2.0 in the SM5. The reason for axis 1, 2 and 3 to combine as this axis does not imply that there are fundamental differences in their conceptualization, that mental disorders are unrelated to physical or biological factors or processes, or that general medical conditions are unrelated to behavioral or psychological factors or processes. ICD uh, axis 4 is removed as in the SM5 as yes, the panel of the SM5 suggests that the SM5 should not introduce its own classification system but rather adopt Z codes in ICD-10. ICD uh, axis 5 is dropped in the SM5 as it lacks of clarity and questionable psychometrics. New chapters and disorders are introduced in the SM5 too. New chapters include trauma and stress related disorder, obsessive, compulsive and related disorders. New disorders were introduced too like disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, binge eating disorder, hoarding disorder, and skin picking disorders. The introductions of these new chapters and disorders confirm the growing importance of this disorder in the current or in the future. The SM5 also introduced some new diagnostic criteria. For example, it removed bereavement exclusion in major depressive disorder. It allows bereavement to be included as a comp contributor of major depressive disorder. Another is substance use disorder. The SM5 actually combined substance abuse and substance dependence into a new disorder which is the substance use disorder. The SM5 compared to the SM4TR, it also introduced severity measures. It is important to evaluate the extent of a diagnostic axis and is an effort in dimensional approach rather than previous traditional categorical approach of the SM. It also offers an additional level of information regarding the diagnosis. Here is an example like mild, moderate, moderate, severe, and also severe. Here is a simple um, graphic to summarize some of the major changes in the SM5. You may have a look at it and it's the end of this part one of how to use the SM5. Thank you and I hope that you have enjoyed this video.